Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Angela Braniff, and today I'm gonna to be sharing with you guys a homeschool book, curriculum, and supply haul. This is a mishmash haul. As you can see behind me, I have boxes, I have stacks of books, and there's a few supply things back there too. It's no secret that I love books, I love buying books. Uh, so we do often end up with a quite robust book collection um, and I'm always adding to it, whether it's resource materials for a curriculum that we're using, things like that. So we'll just get into it. I'll share with you guys. There is some of our curriculum for next year. It's just some of the things that I've already gone ahead and ordered. Certainly not um, an exhaustive list of the things that we have for next year. If you're new here, I'm a mom of eight and I have uh, five kids that are of school age that I am homeschooling. So we've got 13 all the way down to our baby Benjamin um, who is eight months old. And so obviously him and the twins are not in school, but all of my other kids uh, are in school. So I'm buying curriculum supplies books for kids both in middle school and elementary school so you're gonna see kind of a spread here of stuff but this is just stuff that has been building up in my pile of stuff for next year to organize and I'm making a few minor changes to the homeschool room so that video will be coming up too uh, every year I like to kind of you know change around a few little things here and there so that will be coming up but for now let's just go ahead and jump into this haul of randomness really is what it is but okay so the first thing i've got here is a little stack of some books that i have purchased honestly these are just so random from from different things and for different things so i'm just going to go through them really quickly and i will do my best of course to link anything that i can for you guys below in the description box if you are interested um, all this stuff all came from a mishmash of Amazon, uh, different homeschool online resource places, the direct websites from the curriculum, as well as used bookstore, our used like homeschool bookstore near us. So I'll do my best to link it if it is available, if I can find it somewhere to do that for you. Okay, so we have What the Robin Knows, and this is How Birds Reveal the Secrets of the Natural World. I was listening to an audiobook recently and I cannot remember the name of it off the top of my head. He mentioned this book, he talks a lot about getting kids into nature and finding a sit spot where you sit and just listen to nature. And he was talking a lot about birds and gave this book as an example. Um, it says, this elegant book will deepen the kinship between humans and other species. It decodes our common language. And it basically talks about how how birds know everything important about their environment, be it backyard or forest, by tuning into their vocalizations and behavior, we can acquire much of this wisdom for our own pleasure and benefit. And the birds' companion calls and warning alarms are just as important as their songs. Deep bird language is an ancient discipline perfected by native peoples the world over, and science is finally catching up. This groundbreaking book unites indigenous knowledge, the latest research, and the author's own experience of four decades in the field to lead us toward a deeper connection to the animals, and in the end, and a deeper connection to ourselves what the bird knows. I also picked up this book, The Blind Girl's Song about Fanny Crosby. We read about her a little bit and some things that we were doing in history and the kids were all very intrigued. And so I decided to look for a little bit more information about her and found this book that looks like it would be interesting. So this will be something that we'll do as a read aloud um, to get to know a little bit more about Fanny Crosby. If you've ever sung hymns in church, you've probably sung a Fanny Crosby hymn at some point. And then I also picked up this book from the Christian Heroes Then and Now. We really enjoy these books. There's a whole bunch of them. There's Christian Heroes, and then there's just like historical figures as well. Um, and this one is about Corey Ten Boom. And we will be doing a little bit more of a deeper dive into World War II. Um, I wanted to pick this one up. This will be a read aloud for us as well this year. And then I don't remember where I stumbled across this story, but I don't know if I mentioned this to you guys. I think I did in a vlog like six months ago. You know, I'm an Enneagram seven. So I'm like always like, oh, what can we do? Let's do that. That sounds fun. And I got it in my head that at some point I wanted to at least me personally hike the Appalachian Trail, but maybe even like our whole family when everyone's older, like everyone has to be able to actually walk and hike. I don't want to have to carry any kids um, hiking because it's already hard enough. But now I've got it in my head that one of my bucket list items is to hike the Appalachian Trail. And anytime I start to feel like, oh, well, that does seem really hard. People say it's really hard. I don't know if we could do that. I love finding in st stories that inspire me to like, girl, come on, like you can do this. And this story just, it just resonated with me and I had to get the book to read um, for myself, but I think I'm also gonna read it to uh, the kids. It's called Grandma Gatewood's Walk, the inspiring story of the woman who saved the Appalachian Trail. This woman hiked the Appalachian Trail for the first time when she was in her 60s or 70s. I would have to go back and look again. Uh, she left an abusive marriage after 
a lot of years. I believe she, I want to say, I need to look at it because now I'm getting, I might be getting two books mixed up, but she had a lot of children. I want to say 11, but I think that might be wrong. Either way, she had a lot of children. She left an abusive marriage. And when she was in her 60s or 70s, she hiked the Appalachian Trail. And in doing that, she shed a lot of light on parts of the trail that were not well kept. And so it really helped to bring restoration to, um, to the Appalachian Trail and get them to fix parts of it that needed fixing and all of that. So from what I understand, this is a pretty incredible book. So I'm excited to read this. I'm excited to read this to my kids. And I just love stories like this, things that are like so uh, almost like you wouldn't believe it, but it's true. And this is a bad A grandma. Um, I also picked up this book, Historium, and if you have seen my little shelf over here behind me, you know that I love the Welcome to the Museum series of books. And when I saw that they were coming out with this one, I was like, uh-huh, gotta have it. So it goes through a lot of different ancient artifacts and shares more information about them. Um, I just love these books. They're big so you can see everything. Uh, the artwork in it and the graphics are really beautiful. They go into uh, just enough detail to make it interesting and informative, but not so much that it becomes kind of dry and boring for kids. Vikings, Mesopotamia, um, just all kinds of fascinating stuff in here. And I am very excited to use this. Um, and add it to our collection of Welcome to the Museum books because they are the best. I did also grab this. Uh, it had some good reviews and it looked good. This was the Live in Light 5-Minute Devotional for Teen Girls. So this is for my oldest daughter who's 13. Uh, I will let y'all know what she thinks of it. I'm going to kind of uh, thumb through it a little bit myself before I give it to her just to make sure that I'm cool with how they're presenting things um, and talking about things. And then I was watching another mom's video. I've been starting to look into homeschooling high school and trying to kind of get wrap my head around what I need and want to do in terms of that for Kennedy. She's going into eighth grade this year. So it's our last year before home before high school and I am just a somebody who likes to prepare a lot ahead of time. I don't like to wait until the year before to figure things out. I want to make sure I thoroughly know how that works in our state and her transcripts and if she wants to take honors classes and all that kind of stuff. So I was watching another mom's video. She doesn't live in my state. She lives in South Carolina and I live in North Carolina. But she was talking about homeschooling high school and her daughter doing like an AP history. And as she was explaining the course and they were talking about it, some of the books she was talking about just looked fascinating to me that I just wanted to add them to our collection. So we're not necessarily going to use these this year in homeschool, but they're probably books that uh, these three books are books that I will read. This one is more, in my opinion, kind of more like a reference, but we'll get there. Um, so these are more books for like me to read and my husband to read, and then we will use them later once we probably get to high school in terms of like history stuff. So this one is called How Should We Then Live uh, by Francis Schaeffer. Uh, this is not a new book, The Rise and Decline of Western Thought and Culture. Uh, so I'm very excited to read that one. And then, ooh, and then this one, The Naked Communist, Exposing Communism and Restoring Freedom. She was talking about this book and her daughter was using it for her history class and I found it intriguing. So I thought I would grab that and read it myself as well. Add that to my pile of books. I love to read books about history, I pretty much exclusively read uh, nonfiction. So books like that are very interesting to me. And then this <laughs> Mahusiv book. So this book is called A Patriot's History of the United States. And I just thought this was very interesting. It's just a timeline of history basically for the US. So obviously I am not going to sit down and just start reading this book. But as we're going through different points in history and US history, going to that spot in the book and using this like a resource. So that's kind of my intent with this is to use it like a resource in our uh, doing our history for homeschool. So I ain't sitting down and reading that, but it's going in the resource pile, if you will. And then the next thing, and I saw somebody post about this on Facebook. And so I thought, you know what, I'm going to grab that because I've got, a, I've got a child that I think that this will be really helpful for. It's called Coping Skills for Kids Workbook. Over 75 coping strategies to help kids deal with stress, anxiety, and anger. And I've got a child that uh, deals a lot with anxiety and gets stressed out very easily. And then that affects their demeanor in, in doing school and... Um, and it, sometimes it can be hard. And so I thought, you know, this might have some really good activities that we could even do as a family. Um, my anger thermometer, what I look like, what I can do. Um, I love that. I love giving kids all, because it says right here, like yelling, throwing things. Um, but what can I do? I can, instead of doing those things, I can take a break. I can shred a piece of paper. If I feel like I want to use my loud voice or stomping foot, I can exercise or I can take deep breaths. 
Uh, instead of sighing loudly or growling, I can get a drink of water or squeeze some Play-Doh. <laughs> like I like that it gives kids tactics and tools to manage those feelings and not just tell them they shouldn't have them. That to me is just futile and it's useless and it's breeding ground for like an explosion later. So just saying you shouldn't feel angry, don't do that. I don't, or you shouldn't feel anxious or stressed. I don't think that's helpful. Um, and so what we've seen over the years, parenting wise and parenting kids um, from trauma and all of that is that giving them coping skills is the best thing that we can do. So I thought this would be useful for a lot of us and probably my husband and I too, if we're all just being honest, adults could probably get a lot out of this too. Couple more books here that are not curriculum and then we'll move into the curriculum. Uh, this one I picked up from the used bookstore. This is The World of Animals. We are gonna do a mammals unit, uh, the good and the beautiful mammal science unit. The kids are very excited about that one. I just love that they could use this as a resource. It's really beautiful. Uh, the graphics are beautiful. It's all broken up into different sections, insects and arthropods, and then you've got fish, and then amphibians and reptiles, and it really kind of breaks it up and tells you lots of interesting information about those things. So I thought my kids would enjoy that for, we are doing a mammal and a um, marine biology unit. So that will be helpful as well as this one. This is Encyclopedia of Animals, a family reference guide. And you know what? I paid $5.99 for this book and I paid $8.99 for the other one. This was only $5.99. And when I was flipping through this, I was like, oh man, oh man. And I was finding out all kinds of stuff that I didn't know. And I just found it really, really fascinating. A chain, the food chain, so fascinating. Um, and in the beginning, it goes over mammals, like what is a mammal, like what defines something being a mammal. Um, it goes over like movement, bone structure, extremities, what doesn't run, flies, senses, uh, life cycles. So I just thought this was really a wonderful resource book to add as well for those units that we have coming up and just to flip through. All right, now in terms of curriculum type books that I have purchased, um, this one I also picked up from the used store. Although it is new, it was just consigned at the used store, so it's not none of the pages have been written in or anything, but it is a critical thinking um, for grade six. So this is for my daughter that will be in sixth grade next year or this coming school year, connecting school and home. And it's just one of those little like daily activity sheets for critical thinking skills. Uh, we like to kind of start adding in more of like logic and critical thinking stuff for our kids, for all of them. And then I grabbed this and I'll be honest, I haven't done the research yet to know if this is going to be grade level appropriate right now. If it's not, that's okay. I wanted it and I'm gonna hang on to it and we'll use it in high school. Um, for my daughter if it's not. Um, I just need to do the research because I couldn't find anything um, on or around the book to tell me what grade level it was. So I just need to do some research. But this is the um, You Decide Applying the Bill of Rights to Real Cases. So there's a teacher's manual and a student workbook. And basically what it is, is it gives you different cases. And again, it's a sort of critical thinking and it gives you different cases and asks you to compare those to the Bill of Rights and whether or not you see them as you know legal, not legal, what should have happened, are they a violation of the Constitution, all of that. So it's, asks, it's helping kids to truly understand the Bill of Rights and how that's actually applied to our lives through um, the application of law and if it's just and not just and all of that. So I found this to be very interesting. I'm such a ding dong, it literally says right here on the back of the book, I guess I just skipped that, you decide, grades seven through 12. So I will probably do this in the coming year because my daughter will be in sixth grade and eighth grade. So um, we, might, we might dip into it, we'll see. Yeah, I thought this was really interesting and something I hadn't seen anything like it before. So I'm excited to give this one a whirl. First box, I'm gonna be honest, I don't even really remember exactly what's in these and what I ordered. Uh, this one is an order from The Good and the Beautiful. Um, I did do some digital downloads uh, instead of the paper ones, so when I do my actual curriculum video to share with you guys like all of the curriculum that we picked for next year, I'll make sure to include anything that I did digitally as well. Um, but for now, I'll just share with you what I have in the boxes. 
Okay, so in this first box, these are, like I said, my daughter's gonna be in eighth grade. And for language arts, I decided that I wanted to do the Good and the Beautiful goes through level seven and then um, there's not a level eight and then it goes into high school. So some people will just go ahead and put their kid in the high school stuff. I mean, everybody has their own thoughts on things, but the Good and the Beautiful did make this sort of bridge for level eight, which is book studies. Um, and so I thought these were really interesting and it's very much up Kennedy's alley. First of all, she is she really loves Abraham Lincoln. He's her favorite president, so I thought she would really enjoy this one. And so it's got this book, which is a uh, biography about him. And then it has the book study with it here. So these are all the different lessons and everything that they do that goes along with what they're reading in here. So it's applying all the language art stuff, uh, writing, spelling, grammar, usage and punctuation, geography, literature, handwriting and art for this book. So there's two different book studies that they offer. Um, I need to look through the lessons and plan that out and see if I'll need to add anything or if this is meant to be like semester one, semester two. Um, and the second one is uh, The Touch of Magic, The Story of My Life by Helen Keller. And again, same thing. You've got the book study here that covers writing, spelling, grammar, usage, and all of that. So that is going to be potentially Kennedy's language arts for eighth grade, um, but I might add in more. I just, like I said, need to sit down and kind of look through this and see if it's enough. And they did recommend getting this, although this is part of their high school curriculum, so I'm interested to see how this fits in, but it is the grammar and writing guide. And again, that just obviously covers grammar and writing. So she'll do that, I think, alongside of this. And then uh, The Good and the Beautiful also came out with a handwriting level seven. It only went up to level six before. Oh, my daughter's gonna love that. She's horse obsessed. And now they came out with a level seven. So I thought I would get this for her. It's just, a, it looks like it's a lot more work on cursive, uh, which she really enjoys. She really loves writing in cursive and learning all about it. So, and then of course we have the History Year Three course book. And I did get in the mail, and I don't know where it is, the game. Every year, the history curriculum has like a game that goes along with it. So this comes with the year three stickers to go on the timeline. You also have your year three course book. So this is the sort of teacher's guide and course book for year three. And then you also have the big book of history stories. So this is usually maps and images. And this one actually has a lot of stories in it. The other one before was mostly just maps and pictures from year two, uh, but this one has a lot of different stories in it. So that will be interesting to see how my kids like that. Uh, that is the thing, Good and the Beautiful does a really beautiful job with illustrations. Uh, they really knock it out of the park better than any other curriculum I've pretty much ever seen in terms of like, the be it's beautiful. It's beautiful uh, and the illustrations and everything are just incredible. So they do a really great job with that. Look at that, so pretty. So that is our year three history. Holy cannolis, here we go. Okay, so this is my order from Masterbooks. Okay, so I grabbed these cumulative record keepers from Masterbooks uh, just to start making sure that again, before we get into high school, um, that I am well versed and understand exactly sort of how to keep the transcripts um, that schools are looking for. Again, some of you might already be doing that in your state, depending on what your state regulations are. Um, ours don't require us to keep super strict transcripts, but obviously you need that once you get in high school in order to uh, have a good transcript to apply for colleges. So for me, this is kind of like making sure that I know what I'm doing and practicing now before, you know, preparation, right? I'm not just gonna like, I don't like to just like wing it and figure it out when we get there. I kind of like to have some idea before we get into high school. Uh, and then I also grabbed this introduction to logic. There is this and the teacher's guide. And this is for grades eight through 10. So this is for my oldest daughter. Again, I was just really interested in the idea of more of a curriculum for logic instead of just the workbooks. Um, something that was maybe a little more all encompassing and kind of took them through different things along the way. Yeah, logic is the study of the principles of correct reasoning. That is its definition. To be logical is to think rightly and to draw reasonable conclusions from the available information. Then I grabbed uh, language lessons for living education uh, for Jonah. He is gonna be in first grade this year. And I really have liked the language lessons for living education, so I grabbed that for him. And then uh, for my other daughter who's in the sixth grade, I grabbed her the level six of the language lessons. And we will probably do a combination of 
bits and pieces of the good and the beautiful, this, as well as some other, um, we do a lot of the brave writer stuff. So I kind of combined a lot of things, uh, but it's just what works for us. Some, for some people that feels overwhelming, but it's just what works for us. It feels actually less overwhelming to me than the thought of trying to like fully do one singular curriculum all the time, particularly if my kids are not like really into it or whatever. So I like to kind of pull bits and pieces. So I grabbed that um, and then I grabbed this. I've never used this and I don't really know anything about it, but it's the Foundation Phonics. Uh, Rosie is getting really close to reading and so I was hoping that maybe this might be something that would help kind of push it, teeter it over the edge for her. So. I'm gonna try this and see what I think. Again, I'll probably just pull from this in addition to some of the other things that we are doing for her. So that is everything that I got from Masterbooks. And that finally brings us to the last two items in the haul. And that is this, uh, what's it called? A personal punch, what is this called? A pro click. So my friend Nikki here on YouTube, Nikki Lynn with a farmhouse full, she uses this to bind some of her curriculum. So like I said, I did order some things from The Good and the Beautiful that were just downloads that I'll need to print. And so um, I really like this, the way she explains this is that you can bind your stuff, but you could still like unclick it and take things in and out of it. So it's not like taking it something to Office Depot and having them bind it for you and then it's like ironclad, that's it. That's all it is for the rest of its life. <laughs> like you can add and take from it. And I, I just like having, things that I can do here at home. Um, I have my own laminator, label maker, binder, all of these things because I don't like having to go because I do so much um, printing and doing different things with our homeschool. So I don't like having to do orders at Office Depot and all that. I, as much as I can be able to do here at the house, I want to. So she has recommended this and I've not pulled the trigger on it. I've always just like kind of hesitated and I decided this year was the year I was gonna get myself a pro click thingy, whatever it's called. So there you go. So this calendar was sent to us, uh, Jefferson Bethke, they, him and his wife, and I think a few other people have a company. I will leave it linked down below. I found, I followed them on Instagram. Um, and anyway, so they sent us this calendar that they've released and it's called the Family Plan Calendar. And it's basically a big calendar for families um, to kind of help keep their focus in the right place if you're a family first kind of family. Uh, so it's got the calendar for the week, how will we refresh and reset this weekend, word of the week, our menu, prayer list, gratitude list, chores, bonus projects, rewards, and a grocery list. So just a very practical, minimal, not obnoxious in any way, like family calendar. I think this is really cool to put on the side of the fridge um, and you can just write on it with like a pencil. You don't have to do like the whole dry erase thing. So I thought this was really nice and definitely something that to me, this is just kind of like a family related product, but um, obviously not that specific to homeschooling, but I'm excited to start using this and figure out the best way to utilize it for our family. But I like that it's pretty flexible since you're just filling in things yourself, right? So that is the family plan calendar designed to keep everyone on the same page. And their Instagram is at family plan calendar. So I will leave that link down below in the description box as well. All right, guys, that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed this homeschool book curriculum supply-ish haul. Don't forget to subscribe. Like I said, I am gonna be doing like a little bit of a mini makeover in here before and after. And I will also have my uh, book recommendations and what I read this month video coming up as well. And like I said, I'll touch on what I've read personally as well as uh, like the read alouds and stuff we've done in homeschool and what we think of those. So that's all to come. Be sure to subscribe if you're not already. And that's it for today, guys. I hope you all have a fantastic day and I will see you guys again very soon. Bye. One last ticket before it's gone.